Alrighty. Ah, hello, everybody. Sorry we're getting started a little bit late today. Um, just got all the map selection and such, everything right on the buzzer. So, um, But welcome. Uh, today we are going to have a Division B East game. Uh, Boogan Squad versus Jailbait. Uh, both teams, this is their first match of the season. Um, so both teams uh, coming in, hoping for a win to kind of start off that momentum. Uh, we can switch over and take a look, assuming that I have it updated. Uh, let's see, does this look right? Ban, Ultrac Pass. Yeah, this looks good. Sky Temple, yes. Uh, yes, so uh, Bugen Squad banned Alterac Pass and Sky Temple. Um, Jailbait on the red banned Dragonshire and Cursed Hollow. Uh, and so our first map was picked by Bugen Squad uh, and we'll be going into Braxis Holdout. Uh, so we are starting off on honestly not a very commonly picked map. Um, it's a the two lane map with the Zerg, nice and fun. Um, let's make sure we're ready in the lobby. Um, yeah, so it's it's not a very common. Map. I think it's a fun map though. Um, so traditionally we'll do it'll be you know a four one split with four people bot, one person top, uh, both teams trying to control the points. Uh, let's shift into the draft because we are ready to go. Um, do we have our team? No. No, they switch teams on. Ah, all right. Uh, so I need to um, swap. And jailbait. This also, I think, needs to swap. Double check here. I, I'm pretty sure they switch teams on me here. Um, on the left side, yeah, we should have, on the right side is Boogan Squad, yes. And on the left side is Jailbait. Okay, so that's fine. Rather do it on the first map and we can stay consistent with that. <laughs> um, oh, all the players need to be, okay, that's fine. Um, Anyways, sorry, getting back to this. Rex are first band. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, this is top, uh, the offlane is all about controlling that point. Rex are is probably the best player, the best hero on Braxis. Uh, Zul banned from Bugen Squad. Uh, again, makes sense because Zul is generally just considered quite OP nowadays. Uh, Gul'dan band. Uh, Gul'dan has good Zerg clear, um, so I could see that being the reason why. It could have also been some sort of targeted band too. And then ETC band uh, from Bugen Squad. Um, don't know if there was some. Again, don't know if this is a targeted band or not. Uh, ETC has been pretty popular in the games I've casted so far this week. Um, so that could be why. Sylvanas first pick. Uh, Sylvanas has shined recently. Uh, she is just very strong and such a big force manipulator. You can get such strong siege with her. Um, so not surprised by that. Ana and Mephisto, one, two combo there. Um, Mephisto, pretty strong mage. Not the best for clearing out the Zerg, um, but good at really putting a lot of that uh, pressure and hero damage out. Now we could see healers and tanks over from Jailbait. So we see Malganus, that'll probably be their tank, almost certainly. Uh, cool skin for that too. Uh, and then Greymane. Greymane, good all around powerful assassin. Um, give that auto attack damage. Uh, so would expect to see from Jailbait healer and offlaner for the last two picks. Uh, and then on uh, Buchan Squad side, um, tank, offlaner, and then more damage. Would be traditional. Uh, so yeah, so Jobit needing a healer still. Bugan Squad decides to ban Rexar. So 
Vulcan Squad needs a tank, like I said, needs more damage, needs an offlane. Um, Jailbait could go for any of these, really. Offlane's the only one that they both need, so they may not want to squeeze that out, but they decide to. So banning Malthale. Um, Malthale is um, a big Malthale player. Uh, Malthale pretty popular also, too, um, in a map like this, just because it's all about getting that pressure. You don't need to double soak or macro as much. Garrosh is the tank for Bugen Squad. Uh, strong tank. Um, got some ways to get out. Uh, Greyman and Sylvanas if they get thrown. Uh, Malganus isn't that bad of a throw target from Joe Bates' side. And then Rainer, just again for that auto A, just matching up one to one with the comp so far. So healer offlane are what we expect to see here. Offlaner being the last pick on Bugen Squad is pretty traditional. Um, you often want to wait on your offlane pick to see what the other offlaner does. Uh, Anduin, strong healer. Uh, he's got lots of good sustain healing. Um, and then the pool is going to be really nice uh, for the Garrosh throw. Uh, only trick being, of course, the pool is on a really big cooldown, and the Garrosh throw is not on that big of a cooldown. Uh, Israel top lane, she's going to be strong. Also, Malthale shuts Israel down pretty hard, so that ban makes a lot of sense. And Imperius. Um, both, uh, you know, relatively common offlaners up top. Um, I would guess Urel will probably have a little bit better of the sustain and, and bully pressure, uh, but we'll see how it goes. All right, we're getting into the game. Um, game one now of Jailbait versus Bogan Squad. Just filling out a little bit here. Okay. Alright. So, uh, almost loaded into the game. Uh, we'll see how this goes. Uh, Grey, Main, Rainer, both going to be pretty powerful pushing on each side. Um, a lot of it may just be on the CC of those tanks. Um, if someone gets caught out, gets thrown, or asleep and stunned, we could see scary things happen. Uh, Alright, now let's do that. So, over on the T side of Jailbait, we have H2O on your rail, going to be running up top momentarily. Uh, Frage, Frage Stellar on Sylvanas, Cawthon on Malganus, Kobo on Greymane, and DB Smiley on Anduin. And over on the red side with Bugen Squad, we have Tompis on Garrosh, Non Champion on Raynor, Thundercats on Anna, Bummernaut on Imperius, and Camp Bellas on Mephisto. Uh, already seeing a little bit of shenanigans. Looking like they're going to try to go for throw and stun and try to get that Yorel pick. Got the throw, gets the stun. Mephisto not quite getting the damage they want, but should be enough for the pick. Seeing that, um, that was a nice, nice pick on them. They're going to come back down here. Uh, Jailbait trying to take the opportunity now, though, um, to push with Sylvanas, clear the wave quick, and see if they can get some pressure. Time to back out, probably. Throw into Malganus. Malganus will be able to get out almost certainly. Another throw onto Mount Ganis. He's getting low. And he does go down to the Rainer poke. Uh, and I'm not quite able to keep that up. Uh, Mephisto himself also getting quite low, but able to get out of there. Uh, top lane, we see both offlaners 
basically full health, full HP. Uh, Jailbait going for their camp for three, whereas um, Bugen Squad just sending the one. Looks like Bugen Squad gonna take the first objective on top and bottom. Garrosh throwing someone out just to get a few extra seconds, trying to stand that point as long as possible. Rainer going straight into the other camp too. Um, so both Siege and Bruisers being taken quite quickly. We do see Greymane rotating up, going for the flank. Oh, uh, go. And it is going to be enough to get that Imperious kill. Alright, so we've got, uh, what, 4 and 4 down bot. Uh, throwing them out Ganus again, and he's going to get taken out again. Oof, just barely. Down to under 100 HP there. Just didn't have any Ana darts, so no AOE. Throwing them out Gannis again, because he tapped and came back. Oh, I saw that Rainer Q. Looks like it just barely missed. Uh, Rainer low on mana, though. Garrosh low on both. Really counting on that Ana sustain. Uh, we've got a fight on the top point coming up. Uh, Yurel's patched in the last, I don't know, year. Uh, uses a lot more mana now, and you can see that taking its toll. Looks like... Oof, throw and stun onto Sylvanas. She's gonna need heals, and she does get a heal from Anduin. Um, so, they're all alive, but Malganus does not have another tap, and Anduin's quite low on mana uh, for Jailbait. Um, whereas most of the stats of Bugen Squad looking a little bit healthier. Oof. Somehow Mephisto dies there and Jailbait just narrowly gets out with both of the heroes. So that was very well done with the finesse there. Um, Bugen Squad so close. Just like one more auto attack and a couple of heroes and they could have traded out in their favor even. Um, however got so low that Jailbait is gonna take a break, go grab some camps, not fight over the point right now, and that's going to let Bugen Squad get, again, more points, more percentage. Uh, so that looks like maybe a tap on your rel. Let's see though. Curious, yes, there are two coming up here. The Imperius looks like he didn't see, ooh, saved that Q to get out. That was a good job from Imperius there. So it does leave a very temporary 4v3 in Bugen Squad's favor, but instead sending Rainer up to take more camps. Uh, both teams really on point with camps. Um, Bugen Squad got their bruisers a good amount earlier, um, but they've both taken multiple camps here. Uh, with the 4v3 in Jailbait's favor, Bugen Squad's going to back off a little bit, and that's going to let... Uh, Jailbait get some percentage now on the objective. Jumping in. Rainer able to heal up. Rainer starting to get a little low on mana. Um, not as big a deal for him. Just uses loses a little bit of utility if he actually runs out. Right. Quick look at talents. Uh, we got Q stat, Q quest, unstoppable, and into the fray. All really standard. Full sleep dart build. Run Morganus and the sleep combo as well means that Andon has to use the pull. Uh, 100 to 76 um, percent. So really better than it looked, considering for jailbait, uh, considering that the first huge chunk of percent uh, Buchan Squad was able to get without jailbait getting almost any. So uh, percent damage armor. Uh, oh, and cleave. Uh, extra damage and mana regen, same. Uh, and slow. And the exterminator. A general cooldown. An area of that. Uh, so we do have Sylvanas, and she does pop her trait. 
Um, so Sylvan's going to really help enable this push up here. Uh, not with Z the Zerg, but even without the Zerg, they're able to get this full wall here. Okay. Um, Bugen squad about a level behind, three quarters of a level behind. Um, gonna take another camp, which I like. Um, Drill going for armor, movement speed, and ah, the full charge reduces cooldown by a whole bunch. Sylvana stacking, Merc Queen, uh, and then extra haunting wave damage. So we could see her using that a lot uh, offensively. Ooh, let's talk about ults too. Uh, Wailing Error from Sylvanas, that's expected. Carrion Swarm, also pretty standard. Art of Defender, we got five down here from Jailbait, so we'll see if they want to do something. Jarell's trying to hide. Uh, Bullet from Greymane. And nothing from Anduin yet. Maybe waiting to see what the enemy ults are. Jarell jumps in, but Garage popped unstoppable. Greymane going Q-Build, uh, not what we traditionally see, but it does make sense to give a lot more AoE damage uh, to fight that Zerg wave. And Anduin taking this stuff. <laughs> ah, did see, um, what is it, Durance? Yeah, Durance of Hate to go out um, and miss that time, but we'll see if it happens again. Um, Warlord's Challenge, uh, Nano Boost, which will almost always go on the Mephisto, uh, Big Shield, and Hyperion. One stack away from the Garish quest, too. Yorel, you can see her on the mini map. Okay, let's just check in the bush. Oh, look at that. Taunt on that Anduin, kept him in place. Uh, Garish suffering a lot for it, and maybe enough. Looks like, oof, the Grimming Q just barely missed connecting with, I think it was Raynor. And if it had, that splash damage may have killed Garrosh. So even 3v4, Savannah's able to put out a lot of damage, but Jailblade is going to have to back off at least until they get some reinforcements. So spending the time to take perks, I like it. Yorel going to try to contest the point to try to reduce the amount of uh, the objective that Bugen Squad can get. Hyperion goes out um, just to you know, create space, <laughs> uh, push out a little bit of damage for sure. Um, but yeah, just to zone a little bit while Bugen Squad runs up. And not able to get a kill or anything, but Imperius was low. So this was this was welcome support from Imperius. They are going to be losing Soak Pot, uh, which is not good because Buchan Squad is still a half level behind. But again. Both teams still on point with their mercs. It's it's really, really nice and refreshing to see that. Um, especially on this map. A lot of times people don't value mercs very much. Too busy just always fighting over the control points. Jobed able to get a little more percent. Um, so right now looking at 34 and 46. Relatively even, slightly to Bugen squad. Throw onto Malganis. Both Malganis and Garrosh taking a bunch of damage. Oh, and the Anduin ult was picked. It is Holy Ward. And that does keep Malganis alive. Um, while Greymane, using the focus that everyone was putting on Malganis, able to jump on the back line and take out uh, Anna. Uh, also putting uh, Rainer down to quite low HP. Buchan Squad gonna do a quick dynamic call here and spin up top since they know they lost the momentum down bottom. Uh, it also gave Imperius a chance to hearth, which is always nice when you can have that. Jailbit coming in here. Yorel cutting off bullet, and that spear may have just saved Garrosh's life. Oof, the Q able to do it, and not only that, but Imperius falls as well. 
Uh, Paul did have to come out to save Greymane. Um, but Paul for two kills is a trade that Jellybit will be happy to take. Uh, Booga and Squad taking the opportunity, grabbing more mercs. Um, great, you know you can't contest super well because you're down a person. So take mercs. It gives you a little bit of extra pressure. So, 100% uh, Zerg is going to be coming top. Taunt onto Yorel, and that's going to be enough to take her down. Garrosh and Mephisto both take decent chunks of damage, but they're able to get out. Hyperion coming out here to help against the Zerg. Looks great. Uh, and with the early kill on Yorel, it looks like Jailbait's just going to fall back. Maybe try to get an Imperious kill, otherwise just go for defending the wave. And that will let Bugen Squad uh, defend their um, Zerg wave coming in here. Losing the keep wall, uh, but if they hadn't gotten that URL pick, may have lost the keep. So, only Merc now is boss. There's no objective. Let's see what the teams want to do with this kind of free reign that they have. Both teams checking boss and then deciding to attack. Going on the gray main. He's so deep. And look at that. Oh, goodness. Huh. Durance and Holy Ward look to be the same radius. That's fun. Oh, the Imperious ult there, the shield that lets you throw out the swords, was just enough to finish off Greymane. And Bugen Squad just not relenting, pushing, pushing. Nether Spear onto Yorel. And Mephisto not quite able to put the damage in. Uh, but with the push that they've got, space they've created, Bugen Squad going to take the camp. We'll see if they try to get go for more camps, boss or enemy bruisers. Uh, increase spell power, reducing armor. Uh, second one runner makes sense because she took the uh, extra damage on seven. A little bit of a lag there. Unstoppable. Jibit clearing out camp makes sense. Bugan squad gonna try to just soak some waves to get more camps. Uh, slow off of sleep, bats, which is really common there, increases the range of Grey Mane's E, uh, Executioner, poked the boss a little bit, uh, extra movement speed, and Divine Star explodes for damage and healing. Looks like Jobate's positioning, maybe to try to go for a gank. They're certainly leaving the mercs there. Nah, nah, they're going, okay. Only the boss camp is up, objective has just spawned, so both teams... Jailbait really wants a fight right now with a minor 16 advantage, but... Uh, by the time they walked over there, I don't think they would have had time even. Yep, 16s from both sides. So, extra movement speed, uh, more Q damage. Uh, Shrine of Hay, oh, ALE. Extra percent damage on Mephisto's circle thingy. Uh, increases healing. Oh, that's a fun one. Uh, attack and movement speed on Imperius's Q. So, he if he gets a few people, he can just really chase and really start doing some auto attack damage. Oh, they're going, f no, they're sneaking around, I think. Uh, removing roots and slows. Yeah, roots and slows, so not the stuns. Yorel face checking the bush and suffering from it. Uh, so, yeah. Bugen Squad, take this opportunity to go for boss. Um, Jailbait could try to go for top, but they don't exactly know what's happening right now. Um, so they're going to try to use Sylvanas trait, get a fort here, and that way, even if Bugen Squad takes the boss, it'll go top. You know, worst case, they'll be even. Morganis thrown deep, but able to mostly get out. Garrosh is low and has to back out. Graming going for it. 
but it looks like the heals are enough to keep Garrosh alive. And that means Greymane Falls wasn't able to get that die value. So now, Jail Bay just wanted to escape without more losses. Oof, good Wailing Arrow, but the second uh, Sylvanas Banshee missed Garrosh, it looked like, so wasn't able to finish that off. Uh, oof, nice ult on Yorel, she was able to do that. Bugen Squad did, st oh man. These health bars are just getting so low. So low on both sides. Goodness gracious. Uh, so this is really scary top. Um, Bugen Squad, Imperius Hearth is back, Hearth's back may defend bot, but honestly with that, probably just goes top. And yes, Anduin does fall, but in return so does Raynor, and oh, Mephisto is quite low, those Ana heals are huge. Garrosh taunting Greymane means that Greymane also falls, and Garrosh just barely doesn't. Oh man, these healers on both teams are just working their butts off. But... That'll be enough. Even if they killed all the enemy heroes right now, it's just too much damage. Uh, that core fell in 10 seconds from the first percent of damage. Not that, 5 seconds. And that will be game 1 going in favor of the red team Boogan Squad. Uh, Nice, solid, well played on both teams. Uh, seven to ten, you can see the kills were relatively even, um, and honestly, just ever so slightly different play on either team could have changed nearly every team fight. Uh, many team fights, people heroes just walked away with a sliver of health, uh, so stay in just as long as they needed to, and. Um, and honestly, uh, healers, again, working overtime, uh, giving just enough healing to everyone to be able to keep them safe. So a really solid game one going in favor of the red team who also, yes, uh, they also were the ones that picked it as well, Bugen Squad. Um, take a look at some of the hero damage here. Uh, yeah, you can see the mages, essentially. Uh, both of them putting out very near uh, buckets of damage. Um, Mephisto dying twice and still within 4k damage. Uh, well, you know, technically not quite within 4k. 4k and 10 uh, damage of the Sylvanas. Um, Greymane not far behind. Then two reds, Imperius and Raynor. Um, so... No, damage looking really even. Again, kills looking really even. It was a it was a tight game. Uh, ended up with before that last Zerg wave, you know, reached the keep wall. Uh, all four forts were dead for both teams, and all four keeps were up for both teams. Um, it was really just that combination of the almost uh, you know more than half health boss uh, and the full Zerg wave. And both of those together let Bugen Squad just roll over. Take that keep, take the core. Um, the buildings, just their health is falling so quickly. All right, and looking into our next game. Uh, so game number two is on Infernal Shrines. Uh, this traditionally has been one of the the most common NGS maps. Uh, Bugen picked the map. Uh, so Jailbit, having lost the first game, had the choice of first hero pick or first map pick. Um, let me sorry, let me switch scenes really quickly. There we go. Uh, 
Uh, Jailbait had the first of first hero pick or first map pick, and Jailbait decided to go for first hero pick, which means Bugen Squad picked Infernal Shrines. So second map in a row that Bugen Squad has picked. Uh, they are going to want to just take a quick 2-0 here. Pick the map win, pick the map win. Um, but Jailbait's not going to make that easy. Um, this, the game one was by no means an easy fight for Bukin Squad. So, waiting on both teams to get ready. Um, Infernal Shrines, uh, it's a three lane map, so it's bigger. Uh, but, you know, AoE is also a pretty strong. Um, draft choice here. Um, last game, and Braxis, you want it for the Zerg. Um, and then for in front of shrines, you want it for the objective to kill the little shrine monkeys. Um, Kelthas, really popular here. Um, Gul'dan, of course, too. Uh, often you see Kerrigan as well. Um, she's you know less in favor recently, but in Meta's past, she was popular on this map. Um, it's not the easiest map to double soak on, but it is certainly possible. Um, you just have to have a hero that can clear and rotate quickly. So you know Malthael, Leo, Zul, things like that. Um, good amount of camps, three camps on the bottom that people wanted to grab. Um, not missing any messages. Uh, three camps, three siege camps on the bottom that people like. Uh, two bruisers up top. Um, the bruisers are generally pretty difficult to invade. You have to go pretty deep to do it. Um, but they're also not super commonly taken because they're kind of out of the way. So if you're paying attention, you know where the enemy team is, you can sneak the bruisers as well. But traditionally, you would see this map, you want a four stack that can rotate mid-bot and then have a fast rotation so you can grab the camps. And getting into the draft. Any second. There we go. And here we go into game number two. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see if the teams uh, you know, go for the same bands, similar picks, or if they go for something completely different. Um, the past two matches I've casted this week, uh, teams have really stuck with their bands. Um, but we see mix up already. <laughs> um, Jailbait saying, nope, we are done with that garage. We do not want to see a garage anymore. Um, Bukin Squad banning Zul, which again makes sense. Zul's strong, you don't have first pick, ban him. Uh, and then Jailbait's banning Anna. Um, so they are just not wanting to see the heroes that were played last game. Uh, same bands from Buchan Squad, though. Now, first pick. What's it going to be here? Victory same first pick as last time. Um, Jailbait going for the Sylvanas first pick. Um, Sylvanas, also really strong on this map, uh, again for just independent split soak pushing type of stuff. Also pushing with the Punisher, um, being able to disable those before it keeps. Greymane and Rhaegar. Uh, so Rhaegar is going to be taking the place of Ana, and Greymane, again, strong, solid hero in general. However, recently, Bloodlust Rhaegar has come into favor. Uh, in no small part due to the large level 20 upgrade it gets. Uh, so I am expecting, especially with that gray main, that we are going to see Bloodlust, which is fun. Um, 
Joe, uh, very good wave clear hero, which is good because you want the fast rotations and you want the, the nice shrine monkey clear. Um, and then Junkrat. So Junkrat is, an, I think, a difficult hero to play well, um, but good Junkrat players are quite scary. They can control that space and dish out that AoE damage. Um, and doing ban from Bugen Squad and Tyrael ban. Tyrael's an interesting ban. I guess uh, Tyrael, I guess, um, really synergizes with a dive hero like Greymane. Uh, would have been really scary with a sanctification, bloodlusted grey main on your backline. Um, but Malganis uh, coming out as the hero, um, so the the tank that Jailbait had last game actually is now over on the side of Bugen Squad and Mephisto, uh, same same mage. Yurel, same offlaner on Jailbait, uh, sticking with it. And we see a Stukov now. Um, Anduin being banned, so not being able to play the same hero. Going for Stukov. Stukov, uh, pretty common on this map, I would say. Um, Alex, also common on this map. Um, but to kind of get in and out of the shrines, you have to go through choke points. Or if you're standing on the shrine, they're not very big. So the off laner is going to be Sonya for Bugen Squad. So that's that. Um, we've got Sonya and Jarel going to be fighting up the top lane. Neither of them are traditionally easy to double soak super well. Um, so I do expect it'll be they stay mostly in top lane, maybe coming down to cover a wave if they have to, and the four stack for both teams rotating mid bot, grabbing camps. Uh, both teams really on point with camps in the last game, so we would hope to see the same thing here. All right, as we enter into Game number two of this best of three series. Uh, first match for both of these teams, Jailbait and Bogun Squad in Division B East. Prepare yourselves for battle, hero. All right, so. On the blue team on Jailbait, we have H2O off landing with your well. Frage Stellar on Sylvanas, uh, Cawthon tanking with Johanna, Kobo on Junkrat, and DB Smiley with the Stukov. Over on the red side, we have Tompis tanking with Malganis, Non Champion on Greymane, Thundercats on Rhaegar, Bombernaut on Sonya, and Camp Bellas on Mephisto, and loving the, the chat. <laughs> Both these teams had some friendly uh, BM banter before the game today, so they haven't felt with each other. Uh, we immediately see 5v4 in Jailbait's favor right now. Um, getting some good damage on Malganis, not able to finish him off. And you're all going to be rotating top now um, to make sure that she doesn't miss any soak. And she won't miss any soak here. And with that, both teams studying their mid-bot rotation. Jailbait a bit ahead, but we'll see how quickly this wave actually gets cleared. Both teams focusing a lot on heroes. Uh, and so both waves... Last minion on blue, not even actually getting cleared. And rotating back to mid. Chuck our mine out, all the camps have spawned now. Losing a few frames there, sorry. And rotating again, but Bukin Squad taking a detour to grab their uh, siege camp. Uh, Jobet also grabbing their camp, and both camps finishing within a second of each other. Uh, both teams missing some soak mid but having a fun fight out on bot.
neither team brave or foolhardy enough to go for the bot camp. And as I say that, okay, both teams just posturing. <laughs> No, is, is Morganus going for it? Can't do that on his own. We do have force for both teams. Um, Jarrell did rotate bot to pick up that soak, um, which means she needs to be careful. Um, Sonya trying to delay, not gonna miss any still though. Got this fight over mid, um, and with the Stukov zoning, with Mephisto being mid to catch that soak, they are not going to lose uh, Jailbait to get in the camp. Uh, armor, movement speed from Jabrell. Uh, not the stacking quest this time. No, not the quest, yeah. Uh, Merc Queen again, though. Well, again, it's getting out with just 100 HP. Gonna tap instead of backing. Uh, and this, this Sylvanas trait, again, you can see the value it's getting. No minion wave, but they don't need it. They got the mercs for damage. Although Smiley taking a little bit there. Get that full wall down before the first objective even arrives. The empowered mercs just doing it. Uh, for the first objective, actually finished. Because um, Sylvanas is up here, has started it. It's going to get a bit of a head start. Um, however, may have to back up here, yeah, because Buchan's Squad is not in position to continue the fight. Hold your ground, shield, extra movement speed to rush in for the condemns. Uh, extra damage, the moving trap, which you can see. Ah, and then the, the quest for weighted plus jewels. Okay. Uh, also, armor, um, specifically physical armor, uh, on the Stukov, which will really help against the Grey Main dives. So both Stukov and Mephisto getting low, um, but neither going down yet. Neither really looking like they're going to. Um, we got almost even on the objective. Yorel diving in, Yorel surrounded, but Mephisto is so low. And she does go down, he does go down to Yorel. But Yorel may, yes, Yorel goes down to secure it. Both tanks low. Oh, but that's a chunky shield. And now, Bugen Squad going to tap. Winged Guard. Extra healing. Uh, extra damage. Uh, War Paint and then full Whirlwind from Sonya. There's the fight. Sylvanas is low, but so is Sonya. Sylvanas does go down, wasn't able to quite loop around the bot there. Uh, looks like similar talents from Mephisto. Uh, not Q build this time from Greymain. Uh, Greymain going just a more traditional build. Uh, increased movement speed and cleanse is a big one. We'll yeah, if Rhaegar's on point with that cleanse, it's going to be pretty big. Uh, Frozen Punisher, a really great one um, for the pushing team because it will freeze the, freeze the buildings. Uh, so that gives them the advantage, essentially, of a Sylv. Oof, almost got my there. Of the Sylv trait without having Sylv. Uh, so Red got quite low, um, but despite the brawls that we've been seeing, uh, only three kills total. One and two. So... Uh, Punisher being on, up on the top lane, both off laners moving down bot. Boog and squad rotating for their camp. We'll probably see Jailbait do the same thing. Yes. Uh, even using the Sylv trait on it. But Boog and squad does not want to give this up. But looks like they don't have a choice. Yeah. Both teams not losing too much. Uh, Joe a little low, but she'll heal up. And Buchan squad taking their level 10 advantage to take this bot camp. Uh, knowing that it's not likely to be contested as long as they finish it in time, which they did. So ults for both teams now. 
Uh, Karen Swarm, as expected, pretty traditional. Leap, which is a fun one from Sonya. Uh, Durance of Hate again. Uh, go for the throat this time. So, last time, <laughs> Greyman was tired of seeing so many. Uh, Greyman was on the other team, but both teams were tired of seeing so many enemies get away at low health. And then we do see Bloodlust, as we were, I was hoping for. Alright, Defender, Wailing Arrow. Both uh, same as last time, both strong alts. Blessed Shield, which is a really nice stun, as long as you don't miss, it's a powerful stun. Uh, really good level 20 upgrade too. Rip Tire, and Flailing Swipe. So, most of the alts that we expected to see. Both teams going for their bruisers, as they kind of position and posture around here. Taking the time to grab their bruisers. Uh, looks like Jailbait will finish a little bit earlier. I had thought so. Oh, they're holding it. Okay. I was going to say, I thought it was finished. So they're holding theirs up just so that they finish at the exact same time. Okay. Interesting. Oh, Durance of Hate just barely missed that Stu call. That was, that was unfortunate to see. Rip Tire going out. Um, all, yeah, all of Bugen Squad was behind the wall, so that was going to be difficult. So we got five of Bugen Squad right here. They know that Ural is top, so they should see her on the minimap, so they're going to want to make something happen. Oof, but it looks like Bo Jailbait is going to escape Fugan Squad and may even get Morganis. Yeah. Oof. Um, that silence slows Root just too much. Uh, so it's unfortunate timing for Morganis to die because the next objective is up now. So, knowing that they're down their tank, you can see that Buchan Squad is just going to take the time, clear waves, regroup. They may even try to get 13s first. Um, that's a 30 monkey advantage, uh, so this is going to be very difficult. They need kills. Bloodlust goes out, increased movement speed, leap, going right on the back line. Um, back line may make it out. Oh my gosh, 5 HP, 4 HP? I swear, these teams making it out by the skin of their teeth. However, Jailbait just needs one more monkey. And they do get it. Not able to get the Mephisto kill. Are they able to get a kill? The slow and the silence was big. Oh, the double stun from the Punisher is rough. And incredibly, though, they all escape. I, these teams know how to how to survive, <laughs> um, despite so much damage going out. Um, it's not a small amount of damage. Um, it's more than half of the total damage of the first game. Oh, that mine just completely isolated Greymane. Uh, the Sylph trait doing a good job of denying the towers here from doing any damage. Which means there's still a mostly healthy Punisher. And the Punisher is targeting Junkrat, or the fort, the keep. Yes. Blue team, Jailbait needs to be careful, but they destroyed the key. Ah! Stuns into slows, into stuns, means a dead Rhaegar. Uh, Punisher is dead, uh, so with only one person dead on Bukin Squad, Jailbait's gonna be. Yeah, it would be pretty greedy to try to go for the core here. So they're gonna back up, probably take the camp. They have a little bit of an advantage. Um, Jarrell backing because top lane is getting a little pushed here. And uh, Bugen Squad going to regroup. So we've got um, Fort and a keep taken down by Jailbait. And Bugen Squad having that top keep down. Uh, or top fort. Um, however, none of that matters because the next Punisher is mid. So it's going to go through the healthy lanes. 
fighting a little bit over this point. Bloodlust popped. Joe is very difficult to kill. And not being able to kill the Joe. Joe's, Joe's a hard one to kill. Even after her trait is down, uh, she's just chunky. So, oops, sorry. Bugen Swad backing up, clearing lanes, taking camps. Uh, Joe Bait taking the kind of mid camp there. Both teams being a little passive. Uh, we may see Jailbait try to go for an engage. They have just like a fifth of a level where they have a 16 advantage. Uh, we can take a look at it. And it looks like they're going to go for their camp. Um, so, same talents from Urella as last time. Um, I think these are the same unstoppable I remember Sylvanas having last time. Uh, Blessed Hammer, Imposing Presence. Uh, more traps and uh, the triple grenade launcher uh, oh um, AOE for the weighted plus tool oh and this is uh, so extra healing if Stukov can heal someone who's stunned or rooted uh, given that there's a good amount of stuns um, it's not a super CC heavy but you've got spear, leap Morganus sleep, Morganus stun. Um, so, you know, a good amount of them. May have a fight mid over this fort. Looks like Jailbait may be happy with just getting that wall, trying to get a little bit of damage onto the fountain. They'd love to have the fountain dead. Uh, movement speed from Morganus, wave of bats. Mystical Spear, so she can pull even without hitting someone. That's going to be good for chasing. The shield on Sonya. A lot of times you consider Sonya to be basically enough damage. You really just want to give her that extra survivability on 16 and 20. Leap onto Stukov. Durance onto Stukov. And Stukov is dead. Uh, Jarell getting low, stunned, but is able to pop her ult. Um... But Sylvanas falls. It looks like Joe may fall. Yurel falls. Oof. Um, whether intentionally or not, almost immediately after Yurel popped her out, she healed, you know, a good 10% or something, but then didn't take more damage, so didn't get more healing. Um, either lucky happenstance for Bugen Squad, or they were really keeping an eye. Um... Shard of Hate, uh, so this is again AoE attacks, um, percent damage, same as last time, uh, extra movement speed, uh, this, this makes sense because you can keep your W up for a long time on the objective, the Executioner, uh, buff to the healing, and super slow when Totem is first cast. So, Bugen Squad taking the time to grab that camp, and now they get the Punisher. Mortar Punisher is going to do a good amount of siege damage. This fort is almost certainly dead. So, Jailbait just needs to not lose anyone defending the fort. With six spear knolls and the Punisher. Uh, they will get... It looks like Punisher pretty easily. They still got all the mercs to deal with, um, but Bugen Squad has backed off to take the camp. Alright, um, so we have a camp bot. Let's see, I think they're taking some tower damage, but does manage to get the Healy Fountain down. Leap in, double stun. Stukov, oof, very close to being able to save his life, but not quite enough. Uh, Sonya almost dying too, and then does fall. The shield and whirlwind was a good attempt, but not quite able to survive it. Um, so, no fort to retreat to. 
but all the heroes are getting so low. Jirel ult popped, that definitely kept her alive. And both teams escaping without, yes, both teams escaping without any more deaths. Um, question is, how much are they gonna wanna push this? So we do have, they're gonna wanna just take the keep. Uh, so we do have 20s available now for Bukun Squad. Um, so we do see uh, Sleep after the Carrion Swarm, which is a good strong update, up upgrade we see a lot with that. Uh, Mimic, traditional level 20 for Mephisto. Uh, Blunderbuss, yep, AOE on attack, also what we see a lot. And then the Bloodlust upgrade, which we talked about. Oof, triple stun there, which was nice and secured that Rhaegar kill. Uh, and then ignore pain, yeah. Again, for 16 to 20 with Sonya, a lot of times she has the damage. You just want to get the survivability. Uh, both teams going for their bruiser camp. Um, Jailbait going to be a good chunk of head. Um, Yorel has unstoppable. Um, strong, I have trouble using it, um, but strong talent. Uh, reduced cooldown on Sylvanas' Q, I believe. Uh, upgrade on the ult for Joe, so it'll stun everyone it can for a bunch of time. Uh, cannonball, so that's gonna up Trunkrat's damage a lot. And bio explosion kill switch. Ah, so if you don't go root, that makes sense. But let's, let's fight first. Uh, Gannis falls pretty quickly, um, but did use the wailing arrow to take him down. Uh, Sonya pretty far in the back line. Didn't see what she popped, but she did make it out. Um, all right, it looks like just the Malganis is going to be the kill here. Um, but that does Malganis again dying right before this the objective in this location, <laughs> uh, which is going to give Jailbait basically free reign over the objective and even to take the Mercs. So. Moving squad, Sam. Fine, we'll just go somewhere else. Um, but yeah, I wanted to. So this Duke of uh, level twenty, I actually, I don't think you see it very often. Um, it works kind of wonky if you take the root. Um, so I think that's probably why it's not super common. The root on thirteen, I think. Um, but it's much easier <laughs> to execute than the root. It's it's really similar, I guess, but it always it feels easier, I think. Anyway, so we have um, what is this? An arcane Punisher. Oof! Morganus Alt got. Oh no! Morganus Alt got interrupted. Um, Sonya popping all of her defensive abilities, but it looks like it won't be enough with the Wailing Arrow too. Uh, and that means Mephisto. You got this, right? 1v5? Easy. Mephisto's an anti-hero mage, right? This is this is your ideal situation. Good luck, Mephisto. <laughs> Campbellas. Go, go, go. Dive, dive. Always be diving. <laughs> Aww. And there you go. Uh can't look at it right now. Oh, we can't. Okay. Uh, we did have a camp and two catapults over on the top core there. Uh, blue co blue's core in the top lane. Um, so they needed the win there because they were gambling on it. Uh, anyways, a uh, good game from both teams. And so that one now went in Jailbait's favor. Uh, so we will have a game three. Um, exciting, lots of game threes this week it seems like. Um, that's what we like to see. Um, both teams showing that you are going to have to fight. Uh, so take a look at the hero damage. Uh, Junkrat and Sylv both topping the hero damage. Junkrat gets a lot of poke damage. Um, so, you know, that's kind of expected. Um, and then Sylv also putting out a lot. After that, uh, Mephisto, Sonya, and Greymane forming the trio of decently close to each other. Um, Fessily, Sonya, and Greymane uh, pumping out that damage. Uh, look at these healing numbers. Look at that. 
for a 20 minute game, having healing numbers that are that near each other is pretty impressive, I think. Um, 7 kills to 12, so not really a blowout in that regards. Um, both teams really fighting over that. Kobo damage. Yeah, I mean, the drunk rat damage is pretty impressive. It, it's Can't lie about that. Um, you, you expect the drunk rat to have pretty good damage, though. Um, take a look at Siege. Um, Jarel, top of Siege. Um, followed then by Greymane, Mephisto, drunk rat. Um, much higher differentials there, though. And yeah, um, looks like Cawthon, the only person who didn't feed. <laughs> uh, really, that's kind of your job on Johanna, um, is don't die. Clear waves and don't die are kind of task number one and task number two for Johanna. Um, I think we went through all of the talents here. Um, but here's another look, in case anybody was curious. Bloodlust, Bloodlust Upgrade. Go for the throat and AoE splash, endurance and mimic, leap and ignore pain for the super armor, Karen swarm, Karen swarm upgrade, failing swipe and the explosion, rip tire cannonball, blessed shield and the upgrade, wailing arrow and extra uh, reduce cooldown on that, um, and then arcane defender, arcane defender, yeah. And unstoppable. Super strain. Where is super strain? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, there are a good amount of stuns coming out, so made sense. What, wait, 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 what are you doing in here, Smiley? All right, and so let's swap over. Oh, there we go. Uh, so game number three is going to be on, drumroll, may I say it, Tomb of the Spider Queen. Uh, so let's see, um, Jailbait won that map, so, uh, Bugen Squad had the choice of either map pick or hero pick. Uh, I am figuring out which one they decided to go for. They're not answering me though. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, so Bukin Squad had the choice of map pick or hero pick, um, and they decided to go for um, hero pick. So Jailbait chose to go on Tomb of the Spider Queen. What is this? Thundercats. <laughs> Thundercats is a big fan of Thundercats. Surprise. Um, so, Buchan Squad will get the first pick of the hero on this map. Um, and let's see. This is the first game, actually, where they've had first hero pick. Uh, games one and two were both uh, jailbait having the hero pick first. Uh, so we will see if anything changes here. Uh, this map is also, I would say, quite different um, from you know, the last one of Frontal Shrines and from Braxis. Uh, wave clear is pretty huge on this map. Um, it's a relatively small map, so you have the offlane, but it's really easy to sneak down and gank that offlane or have the offlaner come up. Uh, looks like both teams are ready. Um, but yes, I would expect prioritizations on um, an offlaner who can escape. 
Please don't Google Hot's jail bait when scouting jail bait. Uh, yes, I would suggest rarely Googling anything jail bait because, yeah, you get put on lists if you do that. All right, we have hopped, and on, and on that note, into the draft. All right, Tomb of the Spider Queen, waiting for players, and I want to see if things change. So Jailbait um, completely changed their draft strategy from game one to two. All right, um, so even though uh, Boogan Squad has first pick, they do ban Sylvanas. Um, Jailbait has been prioritizing Sylvanas. Well, prioritized Sylvanas really high there, so. Um, and ETC, so slightly different, but still not wanting Jailbait to have that ETC. Um, and Jailbait banning Zul because everybody bans Zul and Garrosh. Um, they let Garrosh through game one and they are not letting it happen again. Johanna, uh, first pick. Is going to be Joe. Uh, makes sense. Uh, so two reasons. One, Joe's a safe first pick because she fits into a bunch of comps. Um, she's a good all-around tank. And then second, she is quote unquote the wave clear tank. And like I was saying, Tomb of the Spider Queen, all about the wave clear. So no surprises there. Jaina and Rhaegar. Um, so Jaina. Um, good wave clear, that's true. Um, she's, I think, made it through. She's not yeah, She's not been really the highest priority of either team. Um, but just definitely wanting her here. And then snagging that Rhaegar. Um, sh maybe they'll go for Bloodlust shenanigans too. Uh, Junkrat from Camp Bellas this time. Um, so... Here is swapping all over the place. Um, Rhaegar swapping teams, Junkrat swapping teams. Um, and then what, Greymane. Uh, Non-champion hopping onto Greymane, uh, same as last game. Greymane, pretty strong. Uh, so we could see a healer ban here or an offlane ban from Jailbait. Those would be traditionally one of the two things. Yep. Um, so ban of Anduin and from Boogan Squad, let's see, Tank, yeah, there you go. Um, so, Malganus banned, because Jailbait still needs a tank. Uh, they also need an offlander, and then probably some sort of AA damage, but maybe not. They can mix it up, we'll see. What are they gonna grab? Zul'jin for the AA and Blaze. Uh, Blaze is going on Cawthon, who has been in the past two games their tank player. Um, so I am biased. I don't like Blaze as a main tank, um, but I know that is not a universal opinion. Um, it is very far from a universal opinion. So. Uh, Jailbait hoping they can get that to work. Anna and Chen coming out from Boogan Squad. Um, Anna being the healer, and then Chen. Uh, first time we've seen Chen picked or banned at all this uh, match. So, always fun to see if you get the more traditional, what, Earth, Wind, Fire, whatever, Panda Spirits. Um, or the cake uh, and then Leo from H2O um, Leo yeah Leo's a, a pretty traditional pick uh, really good wave clear assuming that they take Neil peasants um, which is you know as mentioned really good on this map um, and then we'll probably see Entomb here, um, just because it tends to be what Leos go. Um, but 
March of the Black King happens still. Uh, let's see. What other alts could be up for grabs? Ring of Frost or Water Alley? Not sure which one of those will be picked. Um, yeah, I'll we'll probably see Taz Dingo, but not necessarily. For a main tank plays, I think you're actually supposed to go Combustion. Could just be because I like Combustion better, <laughs> even though I'm not allowed to take it anymore. Um, but... Alright, so game number three on Jailbait. We have H2O on Lee Orvir, Crave Stellar on Zul'jin, Cawthon on Blaze, Kobo on Jaina, and DB Smiley on Rhaegar. And then over on Bugan Squad, we have Tom Peace on Johanna, uh, Non Champion on Greymane, Thundercats on Anna, Bummernaut on Chen, and Campbellas on Junkrat. And I just using that Q to scout, putting a sleep dart on. Mine just pushes Blaze a little out of position. Uh, so really, um, uh, Jailbait wants this fight mid, and Bugan Squad does not. Jailbait has Zul'jin and Jaina, both of whom need to stack on heroes. As Bugan get? Ah, oh, pop down. Just look at my offlane. Did you all kill someone? So it doesn't matter too much um, that first kill. Uh, it gives a little bit of a XP advantage, but you know it's less than a wave I think at this point. Um, so still both teams just need to focus on not missing XP soak. Uh, Leo getting quite low here, um, even through the spooky hand. But then so is Chen. Uh, notice on the minimap there, you can see Greymane going to grab the Bruiser Camp. Um, neither team. Oh! Junkrat not quite able to escape. Almost made it out with that mine, but the mine also threw Blaze down. Uh, so, <laughs> Greymane not able to finish off the camp by himself. Uh, so, Jaina and Rhaegar are going to grab the camp here, and they will get their first camp first now then. Skirmish is happening down here. About 80%, you know, not really a full level in favor of Jailbait right now. Uh, so, Bugan Squad really wants to even that out. Um, could just be because they're letting the waves push in a little bit more so they get their XP later, but even then. Just lots of back and forth, lots of rotating. Uh, Rhaegar did sneak down and grab these giants, um, which is nice. Uh, grabbing these giants often can be a pretty big uh, advantage. They can start pushing down the walls. They're not the easiest things to grab, to, to defend against. Uh, oof, Grey not where he wants to be but we'll make it out with the huge sleeps going on over there. Um, so Leo did that rotation, then gonna rotate back down. Uh, note, the Jailbait does have enough for a turn in. Uh, they're gonna go for it and they're gonna get it. Um, jo looked like she was trying to get her gems in, but wasn't quite able to. And I think uh, they were also 
Broken Scrub is also like five jumps short. So, spiders coming up here. Looks like we have four from Jailbait pushing with the top spider, which is the traditional lane you want to push hard first because it is the boss lane. So later it lets you get the boss easier and push with the boss easier. Another wave coming out already is going to get most of the fountain, or all oh, the shields of the fountain. Still four from Jailblade up here. Uh, Chen solo getting this and the soak down. And then Leo and Greyman just trying to fight. Uh, and with this much health still, good chance this is going to get the fort. But no, Jailblade's going to back off. With no minions to also help soak things up, makes sense. Spider wasn't quite strong enough. Uh, XP has been mostly evened up now, and all forts are up, so Boogan Squad is probably pretty happy with how the game is looking right now, given how it looked a little bit ago. Uh, and they do have a turn in. Uh, so talents, Jana going for full. Or Jana. Anna going for full sleep. Um, auto attack. Ignite to extend that, and then Elusive Brawler for the evasion. Um, makes sense into the Zul'jin there, don't let him stack. Same Greymane build as last game. Uh, hold your ground. Ah, subdue for extra slow. Oh, missed the pick down bot there. Uh, lost 15 gems, 20 gems. Trying to remember how much of an advantage they had there. Uh, so, Bukin Squad still has enough to turn in, but it's a matter of if they can find the opportunity. Uh, Leo go for Q heal, Neil Peasants, which is expected, and then faster drain momentum with the movement speed. Jin, piercing Q, armor when healing, duration on the Q. Frostbot build from Jaina. Uh, let's see. Increased area, crossfire. Yeah, pretty traditional build from Blaze. And yeah, I know they're alts. Uh, let's see. Lightning shield, lightning shield cleanse. I think the same ones. Uh, anyways, so Jailbait gets alts first. Um, about a half level lead, which means that Bukin's God will be getting alts shortly. But they don't have them still. Not quite. Uh, so we do have Entomb, we do have Taz Dingo, uh, we did get Bunker, not Combustion. Um, Bunker is just such a strong ult. Uh, Ring of Frost and Bloodlust. And then over on the other side, make sure Joe's not going to die here, no, but the fort is going to die. Uh, we have Cursed Bullet, which will wreck a lot of Blaze's health. Blessed Shield again, Rip Tire again, uh, and nothing yet from Anna or Chen. So, Jailbait does not yet have a turn in, but they're one gem off. Ooh, I thought that Blessed Shield missed. Impressive. Um, so several alts down there, but no kills. And two going down on two, and that let the Ring of Frost hit. But as long as Joe makes it out, Chen... No, Joe did not make it out. Chen used the spirits to escape most of the damage, but does now need to escape as well, because two spirits are dead. Ah, uh, yeah, so we just see spirits and nano boost. And even though... Uh, Pugan Squad has had a turn in for a bit, they've just not been able to kind of create that space that they needed to. Uh, so that means that Jailbait will get two turn-ins in a row here. And it looks like Jailbait is deciding first they want this mid-fort, and they want it before the spiders even get here. And they get it! Zul'jin going low, Blaze also going low, and Zul'jin does go down to the Chen dive. Uh, Leo tried to entomb to kind of block that off, but wasn't able to. Chen now has no more um, brew. 
There we go. Mix it up. Uh, and deep dive. Um, all of Bugan Squad gets out. But they lose Bot Fort. Lose a good chunk of the keep wall. We'll see how much of it. While they were busy chasing mid. Uh, didn't lose anything mid though. Fort was already dead. Alright, Jailbait pushing bot with the last of the spiders that are alive. Um, looks like they're going to be content with just the wall and they're going to back out. Uh, so we do have 13s from Jailbait. Uh, oh, uh, Leo going for a uh, basic attack build, auto attack build. Um, it's a fun one. Uh, you get the stacking then on 16. Uh, oh, Zul'jin also going for an auto attack talent. <laughs> uh, no, common on Zul'jin. Um, attack speed reduction, so that'll... Greymane will be sad. Um, Blizzard on 13, um, which is not super common, but it's a it's a cool one. It'll really let, let Jaina get that Blizzard damage a lot safer and from a m much wider distance. And extra heals. Uh, basic attack range. Uh, more damage on what chose, what is that, Q? Movement speed. Uh, the fiery aura. We don't know Ana's 13 yet. Alright, Jailbit pushing in here because they grabbed the mercs. Um, getting just the keep wall again, and Leo again using Entomb just as a a zoning ult, essentially. It's not the largest cooldown, so it's not the biggest deal. You see Jane has passed halfway for her frostbite. Ooh, and Bloodlust popped, but not able to get the Chen kill because he's able to split spirits first. Uh, and so it looks like Bloodlust, Spirits, Riptire, all used there. Um, and only some HP damage to show for it. Uh, NS13 is taken. Roots and slows again. Uh, let's see. Slows on Leo, slows on Sul'jin. Slows on Blaze, slows on Jaina, slows on Rhaegar. That makes sense. Uh, yeah, no Icy Veins on 13. I'm going for the Stormfront instead. Uh, what's the other one there? The other one is uh, like a, I don't remember the name, but like Frost Armor or something like that. I think. Uh, it's a defensive talent at least. Is that the one where you gain shields? I think, I think that's the one where you gain shields. Anyways, Bogan Squad, Bogan Squad able to get their turn in finally, um, but the lanes are so pushed this is mostly just going to be kind of a neutralizing turn in probably, um, where they just get the lanes back out, get the middle of the map, again, kind of back under control. Uh, 16s for Jailbait, but Jailbait's Leo needs to be careful, no, okay. Uh, yeah, so the attack speed quest on Leo is expected. Um, attack speed also on Zul'jin. Uh, the cooldown reduction for Blaze's stun and armor. Root for Jaina. So she'll try to root those so that people can follow up, and she can follow up. Um, and then extra lightning shield and extra damage. So Boogan Squad has enough gems for a full other turn in right now. Um, one turn into kind of neutralize things a little bit. Didn't do all that much, really, to be honest. And now one turn in, hopefully, to make more stuff happen. But they're just so pushed back. They don't have the space for it. And they don't have 16s either. So, really close to 16s. Bugan Squad almost certainly wanting to get 16s before they make something happen. Jailbait not wanting that to happen, but it was just too close. Uh, and they couldn't really manage. Uh, Jailbait, four gems off from a turn in. Bullet goes out onto Blaze, but he pops unstoppable in armor and makes it out. 
Which I'm trying to turn in and actually got it. Bunker down, but Zul'jin stunned and not able. Uh, Root goes down, hits just the Ana, and Jaina falls for it. Chen dies, Joe is very low, but Ana's gonna try to keep her alive. Nanibus on the gray main, um, Jaina's dead. Er, sorry. Jaina's dead, but Nanibus was going on her anyways. Um, I guess... Junkrat would be the other main person to put Nano Boost on. Um, honestly, not the best Nano Boost targets, really. Um, but, you know, Grandman's not going to complain about pumping up the Q some more. Uh, 16s for Bugen Squad. Bullet goes out. Let's see if we can get these quickly. Uh, burst healing, uh, extra basic attack damage, which combos really well. Um, so I have the tiger on level one. Executioner heals, and uh, this time we're going for cooldown reduction on 16 for Junkrat. Greymane needs to be careful. Greymane is so oof. the entomb in the wall, but up top Zuljin. Pumping out a lot of damage, but Chen able to dodge the damage again. Uh, Chen's ult has saved his life multiple times. And so that means it's now a 5v3 in favor of Bukin Squad. Um, last two tournaments have really evened this up for Bukin Squad. Uh, because they were behind for a good chunk of that game, so they're going to go boss? No, they were thinking about it. Um, they have another turn in. And they are going boss after sh sh going for that tower? I don't know. I feel like that was a little bit of miscommunication there, but that's okay. Uh, Jailbait almost certainly knows this, and so is going to turn in bot to basically try to balance out that boss as best as they're able to. So it is now a 5v5, uh, even levels, even talents. Bugen Squad not wanting to push with the boss, wanting to kind of defend the rest of the map, basically. See Bugen Squad going bottom, gonna clear the wave, kill the spiders, then probably rotate mid, do the same thing, and then they will still need to go top um, because, yeah, they're backing off here, because the spider is still very healthy. So the question is, where is Jailbait going to go? They want to push mid here instead of top. Um, Jaina taking a bunch of damage, but we'll get healed up. this keep will fall, the question is, do they have enough to push in? And Bugen Squad is healthy, so I don't think so. They pop Bloodlust just for the keep. And so all three keeps fall now for Bugen Squad. Um, but they're even now with 20s, everybody's alive. Ooh, Joe's going deep. Buried alive is gonna be big. <laughs> that burst healing. Oh, sorry. That's not gonna hurt. Uh, Rhaegar does fall quickly. Suljin's gonna fall. Leo falls. Blaze falls. Suljin makes it out. Ooh, Suljin does make it out. Maybe. Yeah, has to dodge the cannonballs. So we saw many of the level 20s there, uh, buried alive, um, forest medicine, which is not something I see very often. Um, I actually almost would have liked the Tazdingo upgrade because Soldier has popped that Tazdingo low, um, and that would have maybe have let Zul'jin stay in fights longer, but I don't play Zul'jin, so they know what they're doing. Uh, bunker upgrade, ice blink, safe one. 
And then, yeah, the um, well, dust upgrade. Um, mana boost upgrade, spirits upgrade. Um, the spirits upgrade is, is really nice. Makes them a lot more durable and a lot more powerful. Uh, splash on Grey Main, indestructible. So not this time going for uh, the Blessed Shield upgrade, but instead just saying I need to stay alive. <laughs> and then Cannonball. So 5v5, we have spiders coming up mid. Um, the spiders up top are really just going to try to equalize the wave a little bit. Um, the mid's going to get the bot fort, or bottom's going to get the bot fort. Um, but mid is where they want to make something happen. Spiders at half health already, and there's no wave. Which is not where they want to be. Buried alive is up. No, not there, I'm down. Not even then. So all it's actually are up besides uh, Storm Earth Fire. Okay, so I'm getting you know half of the keep wall. Not getting too much, really just bot fort, top fort, and getting those waves pushed out some. Uh -huh. Yeah, Leo's has only died once, so not getting that trait value. We can see though, here damage is not balanced. Oh, coming in for the flank. What's gonna happen? Bloodlust is popped. Uh, Greyman going on Jaina. Who does have ice block. So we'll the first one down. Rhaegar the first one, the second one down. Oof. Junkrat getting low. Leo dies, Blaze just barely makes it out, um, and Greyman was able to zone Jaina out almost at the start of that fight, um, which was really awkward for Jaina. <laughs> good tries for the shooting over the wall, got some damage in, it's good. So every ult down now except for Bullet, uh, Bullet hit Blaze for a good amount, so Blaze is able to dodge that. Not the biggest on Jaina, but hey, I'm still 40%. And 2v4 here. But somehow, they're able to push him off. Um, ooh, oh no, that stun's scary. I, I, I'm quite impressed with Jailbait keeping, keeping that keep there. Um, I thought that they could have just rolled over. Um, but... I guess probably the, the you know the changes to the keeps just made it too difficult to push into. Uh, they also had Junkrat back, and Junkrat is a significant amount of their siege damage. Greymane's a lot too. Um, Hugen Squad popping out of that. Um, oof. Junkrat died so fast. Uh, Anna popped, I think I saw her pop her triple heal, but it was just not enough. Um, Chen dies, so um, just not able to pop somewhere fire because it wasn't quite up yet. Indestructible out for Joe. She dies as well. Now with a 5v2 lead and no keeps to help defend themselves. This is looking like endgame for Boogan Squad. We've got catapults coming in all three lanes. Gonna need one of the most heroic defenses that Hots has ever seen <laughs> in order to have any chance here. One for the Leo kill, not able to even get the Leo kill. And that would be game. It's game number three going in favor of Jailbait. Take a look at the stats here. Uh, and then let me double. So I'll leave the stats up while I check for um, interview. So as mentioned in the game, um, 
the damage. I think this may have swapped around a little bit. But, um, anyways, yeah. Uh, hero damage. Look at that. Way in favor of. Um, okay. Oh, Smiley. Hey, Smiley. You're fine. Thanks. You're eavesdropping on me. I. Uh, so just a sec, let me unmute yeah, you. Yeah, no worries. Okay, you should be unmuted now. Say hi again. Yeah. <laughs> hi there, how you doing? Doing all right. Thanks for, the, for picking for up the, the first cast. time. Yeah, uh, yeah, no problem. Uh, it was a fun match. Um, yeah, it was. It was a tense match. Yeah, 1-1 uh, there for the first two games. Mm. So how, how stressed are you all now? I mean, not not at all now, but like... <laughs> How three minutes ago? I stressed you five minutes ago. Yeah. Three minutes ago when we were like, oh god, this engage could go bad. Um, but no, it, it, Bugen squad's really improved. Oops. Like, this this is a, a different team, and I don't mean the new subs. I mean, Tom Peace has played a, a really good game. Uh, Bummer Not played a really good game. Um, you know, it, they, they, it, it's not just the subs. They're a much, much better team this season. So that was... That was tough. We had we had to earn that one. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'm, I mean, we we could tell the first the first two matches. Yeah. I mean, all, all three of the matches really could have gone in anybody's favor. Yeah. Um, one thing I noticed was both the few teams, both of you, you really like escaping fights with like sixty health. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I mean, I think part of that is Thundercats is a really good healer. I like to think I'm halfway decent. Um, we, we, we in comms tend to be really good about, about recognizing when we can't get the trade. We also recognize, so like on that Braxis game, even though we lost it, there are a lot of times where we recognize like we needed a sacrificial lamb. And so we sent someone in who, who didn't have as much wave clear, like, uh, like gray mm -hmm. in order to try to give us a chance to clear trying just because like we knew we weren't getting out. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, their, their garage game one was troublesome i did what i could uh, on the anduin but i mean if anyone was ever alone it, it they 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 had really good ganks there uh and tom peace did everything you need to do on the garage stayed mounted stayed uh stayed close and you know really made a lot of great plays for his team and and uh as, as you can tell we didn't want to we didn't want round two yes. of of the tom peace garage show solidly so. banned on the second yeah. third game there uh, yeah. is, so, we're also so, kind of shitter, so we have to we have to not play against Garrosh normally anyway. <laughs> yeah. Oh well, I saw you know you had some good and pulls when someone would get thrown, yeah. but the Garrosh cooldown is you know significantly yeah, lower. Well, they were they were syncing up the Anna grenade a lot, and so n like normally I would say like uh, into Garrosh, yeah, light bomb baby. But because of the Anna grenades, I had to go salve just to get the protected. By the way. Um, because otherwise, I mean, people were just dying to the poison damage. So it was, they executed their combo extremely well. And then that's, that's why they won that game. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's see. Uh, so I noticed nobody wanted to let Zolter ever. <laughs> yeah, I mean, bliss, please. That's all I'll say there. Bliss, please. <laughs> no and no just... one has any idea how to deal with it. Well, part of the problem I would say well, I mean, is I, you can can't deal practice. with it. It's, yeah. I mean, you can deal with the Zul. It's just that even when you do everything to deal with the Zul, mm -hmm. Skeletal Mages is still incredibly strong. His Skeletal Warriors are still doing too much damage. Mm -hmm. and so, like, yeah, you think, like, oh, don't stack up in his W. I mean, if the enemy team has any kind of slows and Zul can flank, like, we had a match with Roll 1 Esports uh, where we got Zul on Towers of Doom. And even when we were down 4v5, because like Jaina would get like a death rattle slow off, Zul just walks in the back and wins the team fight. So so we we just don't want to deal with a hero that that Blizz, please. I'll just say that. <laughs> okay. I mean it's you know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean I don't think you're alone in that sentiment. Yeah. Um, just again based on the bands that everybody saw. Um. Yeah. So. You all like Savannah, I've noticed too. Uh, she's in a good place, especially with the current patches. Um, it's also a matter of, I mean, it was maps. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we probably would have picked her on Tomb too, but if we went to something like, uh, like uh, I don't know, we banned it out, but Sky Temple probably wouldn't be going Sylph mm -hmm. uh, necessarily. Um, I mean, but the problem is, 
she has that utility that no one else in the game has, which is to shut down the most powerful hero in the game, the towers. <laughs> and um, like, if you think Zul's OP, wait until you see those things. And um, she's also just a top tier assassin, even if towers weren't a factor. So yeah, yeah, she's able to pump out a lot of damage. Um, <laughs> yeah, we could we could see and that. And Frag, I mean, Frag's just an exceptional player, so. You put him on a on a hero with with that playmaking potential. He's 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 usually going to make us look smart. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, and then so I have to mention it because I'm not a fan. Blaze main tank, eh? Uh, so the reason is is that there's three main tanks in the game right now, and they picked one and banned two. So <laughs> actually, I, I kid. There's four, but we had to ban the Garrosh. Um, right, right. So I there's mean, four main tanks work, in the game right now. Clearly, <laughs> I. If you want to play Muradin in the Chen, diving your back line, you go right ahead and we'll, we'll take the W. So the Blaze was to drop Bunker, which we actually weren't able to get in. Credit them. They were getting a lot of roots and stuns off and just preventing us from getting into the Bunker. Yeah, there's also um, at least, like, I think one body block where Zul'jin was really low and just couldn't reach the Bunker. Yeah. Like, that was just Yeah, painful. I mean, that was... It wasn't even... Like, in my case, I was right next to Bunker. And just credit Panda Pals, which is... You know, it, it, it's... <laughs> It's problematic. Uh, mm -hmm. At that point, I almost wish I had Stukov, like I did, uh, just for the massive swipe. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Rhaegar is just insane on Tomb, so we, we, we stuck with that. And then one last thing. So at the la near the very end of the third game there, mm -hmm. uh, you pulled off a like 2v4 defense on your keep. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I think technically we had me... Uh, I mean, we had the Leo slowing. That was actually a big part of it. Yeah. That's true. Um, and 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 yes, he was dead. wasn't doing damage, but H uh, two O, you know, he he. I mean, he got a lot of slows and he died a lot. So ton of trait value that game. He died twice. I'm 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 just busting his chops. No, he he played he played a really good game. Twitch chat was complaining. He was like, no Leo trait value. Yeah. No, he he played a really good game. I didn't have a good game three, so I need to go back and kind of look at some of the mistakes I made and try to build from them. I mean, healing numbers were good. Healing outflow was good. I was looking at like both I mean, healers. If healing numbers were if healing numbers were all that mattered for supports, is, everyone is would that pick not the case, all the time. You know, no, uh, I don't know. Not. You know, okay. No, my cleanses were were pretty bad that game. Ah, cleanses are hard though. No, I just suck. <laughs> I think they're hard, anyways. But yeah. any secret strats you want to share and make not secret for the rest of the um, season? Though? Don't don't give Tom Peace Garage hot tip. It, it, secret it, strat for the other team. <laughs> it it uh, secret strat for the other team against us. Um, uh, I'm I'm still a bright wing one trick, guys. You should you should keep banning that out. Mm, yes, this series really supports that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any last thoughts or call outs you'd like to make? I mean, shout out to my team. Like we we've kind of had um, you know, we've been doing heroes lounge, and we had a pretty rough match last night, and. Uh, you know, just just keep checking along, guys. We're we're getting there. We're gelling. I thought we had some really really good calls tonight. Uh, shout out for you for picking up the cast last minute. Uh, shout out to everyone that makes NGS run. But a uh, huge shout out to Boogan Squad. I mean, it, it's really fun to see. You know, they they moved up from C last season and, and had a bit of an adjustment period. But I mean, they 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 played like a top four, top uh, yeah, top four, top yeah, three I, team I in the East tonight. Wouldn't have guessed they moved up from um, C last season. I just, mean. Yeah. You know, we still have our eyes, of course, on uncomfortably numb tiny dancers and Roomba rotations, but I'd put Book and Squad up with those guys uh, as well. They played extremely well. Oh yeah, it was it was a tight series. Um, many yeah. team fights were razor's edge on who was going to win them. Yeah, yeah. Um, great. Uh, good luck with the rest of the season. Then. All right. Thank you. Yeah, Take care. You too. See ya. All righty then. Uh, yeah. Uh, so that is it for me. Um, thank you, everybody, for watching. Uh, I posted a link to the the NGS caster review. Uh, so if y'all have time, that's what like three or four questions. Like ah, uh, so it's like ten questions, um, but they're multiple choice most of the time. Um, so if you have time, um, please do that uh, for all the casters if you can. Uh, and otherwise, see y'all next time.